Hello, everyone. This is Bob Tremore. As a quick background, I have been following and conducting research on Peloton extensively. I primarily hang out over on Twitter. That's where I do all my postings, with the exception of these occasional videos. Today, what I wanted to kind of get into is the playing field or the battlefield of where Peloton stands in relationship to its competitors. Now, today we're talking about connected fitness. Connected fitness, in my definition, means there's a device, a machine, which facilitates connecting a user via exercise to some type of data store and records metrics, et cetera, what have you. So we're going to do kind of an analogy today. We're going to put the players, who you can kind of see in the yellow jersey across the top, and we're going to put them on the field as to where they stand today in relation to each other. So what we're doing here is we're moving from right to left. We want to get into the left end zone and we're we'll start moving our players. Now I have these jerseys or these companies arranged in no really specific order. I have Peloton up front because I follow Peloton and uh, in all clarity, I will likely be referring back to Peloton more than the other companies. But we're briefly, there's a lot of jerseys here, there's a lot of companies. We're going to talk briefly about each one of them in relation to Peloton or in relationship to simply the state of connected fitness and where they stand, in my opinion. The goal of this, while it will be interesting to kind of examine each player, the goal of it is to kind of get to the end of the video where we see where they are on this field. And the field represents, by and large, success. It may represent a number of things as we go along, but the closer you are to the goal line, certainly the better. We've got some defenders here. We'll talk about those briefly in a little bit. Um, hopefully the names are somewhat clear. Uh, as we move them around, I'll certainly be talking about each one. Now you'll notice the jersey numbers are a little bit interesting. You might see some actually jersey numbers that are repeated. I'll give you just a, a couple seconds to think what these jerseys numbers may represent. And uh, I'm not going to go a long time. In fact, I'll end it right here. Jersey numbers represent the monthly sub fee for each one of these guys. We go all the way from zero, zero, zero dollars per month up to a high of, of the people I have here on the field. $49 a month. So again, keep in mind, I'm not dealing with kind of the app only people. I'm dealing with people who are pushing out hardware connected to a subscription fee. Now we have kind of three fields of play on our hash marks here. Down on the bottom, we have the cardio lane, bikes, treadmills, etc. On the top, Strength lanes, so items that deal with strength, um, functional strength, doing you know bench presses or lifting weights, things of that nature, things that are dedicated to strength. We've left the, uh, between the hash lines, we've left this green, meaning a company is participating in both, which generally would be a good thing in most uh, circumstances. So let's go ahead and let's, let's, let's just, let's dive in here and let's get going. And, Ultimately, here in a few minutes, let's let's see where the field looks. First player to bat here is Peloton. So Peloton, let's put them at least here briefly in cardio. They have bikes and treadmills we know. They recently came out with Guide, which they market as a strength device. And if you watch my previous video, you kind of know my thoughts on Guide. I might recap those here briefly. Let's pull up a picture of Guide here. Uh, it's not showing very well on your screen, so I apologize. But at the top, let's see if I can scroll this down a little bit. No, I can't. But along the top, if you could see it here, is a number of menu options. We have bikes and tread, which are cardio, and strength. That strength menu option was critical to Peloton. They needed to get that strength menu option there. They've decided that they did with the guide device. Now the guide device, 
uh, let's see here, we can see here is this tiny little box. And what it does is it essentially puts you on screen with the instructor. It is not participating in the exercise per se. It is not providing weights. It's not providing resistance. It's not even counting reps. It's counting movements. You could theoretically put on a 10 minute class of just Sims doing some type of functional strength. Um, and you could do jumping jacks for 10 minutes and you likely would get full credit in Peloton's guide movement tracker for completing anything and everything that just Sims did push-ups, core, um, doing some dumbbell work. So in my opinion, even though Peloton is classifying this as guide, I or classifying guide as strength, I honestly don't. So Peloton probably would like to put themselves in the green area, but until they get the rower out, which will be soon, which rower is generally classified as a strength conditioning machine, Peloton really is cardio. I mean, someone needs to convince me that guide is truly a strength connected fitness device. That said, in today's environment, today's environment, I mean, as we are talking right now, things are down for really for almost every company across the board, connected fitness, retail, real estate, well, real estate is doing all right, but all these other areas, we're in a depressed area right now. So we take that condition and that is the level playing field of where we're at. Where is Peloton in relation to these other competitors? Honestly, they're at the goal line, if not in the end zone. They're a powerhouse. They moved the ball from 2014 to 2022. <laughs> Very few people can reckon with the power that Peloton is providing. Um, it is simply a big name. It is, it is the name. So they are in cardio. Someone needs to convince me they're in strength right now. I don't think they are. They're in cardio and they are at or in the end zone. So excellent for them, good marks. Now we kind of get into just people who, other similar players in the connected fitness space. We've got some, uh, you're probably looking at these red shirts. Red shirt jerseys typically indicate a rookie, right? Uh, freshman. Those are those folks that we'll get to here in a little bit. And we're not gonna spend a lot of time on each one of these. Uh, they are fairly new to the space. The folks in full yellow jerseys have, they're veterans, they've been around for a while. Next up, we have Echelon. Echelon, kudos to them. They are, again, this is my opinion as I go through this. I'm not referencing any textbooks. This is my opinion from studying the connected fitness space for several years. They are a low cost provider. You'll see them in Walmart, you'll see them in Sam's, you'll see them in Costco, you'll see them in Target, you'll see them cutting prices left and right. They are a low cost provider, but they do offer connected fitness and they do have an application. Not only that, they have live classes just like Peloton, $35 a month if, we, if you didn't catch it, whereas Peloton is $44 a month. Where do they stand, I guess, in relation to the leader or at least the guy in the end zone? I don't think by and large, you hear a lot of people proclaiming from the hilltops, I've got an echelon and my three friends have an echelon and I have a father-in-law with an echelon and what have you. Echelon within its own market is doing fine. In the broader connected fitness market, I think they probably could be classified as a low cost, low cost leader. But that said, in relationship to the connected fitness space. And while they are in both strength and cardio, so they're in the green lane, so fantastic work by Echelon. But uh, I, I'm i gonna put them on the, on the 22, is that right? Put them on the 22. Here's another competitor, not entirely dissimilar to Echelon, though I think they have a little bit more name recognition. We're talking with Bowflex, nineteen nine or $19 a month for their uh, Journey app, which they use on their equipment. Uh, again, both strength and cardio. They have more cachet. I think they have broader market appeal. Uh, their machines, I believe, are a 
bit garish, over the top, perhaps gimmicky. Um, I think Bowflex likes to jump on fads and find fads or develop fads and create equipment to fulfill those needs. They're above echelon, I would say. And again, I don't have, not all these companies are public. In fact, very few, if apart from Peloton, are they public in the United States? So we're just having to kind of go on what Bob Tremor says today. So my apologies there, but I'm going to put Bowflex. They're doing fine, honestly, in their niche. They're doing fine. Uh, in relation to Peloton or reaching an end zone, meaning just everyone is favorable of them and everyone is clamoring to get their products. I don't see that, but they're not doing terrible. I'll put them on there. Where do I have them right now? I'd say 36 yard line. So I'll put them 36 yard line, a combo of strength and cardio. So uh, kudos for Bowflex. They haven't reached the 50 yard line. Well, on each, re at least reach midfield here, hopefully. And that's well, the end of the field or end of the video. We'll see where we end up there. Here's a lot of people's favorite company, um, sarcastically. Uh, SoulCycle. SoulCycle has gone through a number of issues recently their demo i would say is extraordinarily specific if anything they have shrunk over the years in both market appeal and simply customer base and they seem dedicated to continue that trend um, i won't go into all of that but they are in cardio let's put them in cardio they have the soul cycle bike for 40 dollars a month for their content Soul cycle is is back here, folks. Uh, they're um, verging on a touchback. Um, Soul cycle is, is not a is not and and in my opinion will not be a player in connected fitness. Um, they will continue to exist, how they exist, and frankly, we'll see if they continue to exist. Temple twenty nine dollars a month. Temple they have the I'm calling it a, a cabinet with a monitor in front of it and the cabinet inside, behind the back, on the sides, they have weights and barbells and um, dumbbells and you can load your own weights and do that type of exercise. And they obviously have content, not only that, but they also have live content. Uh, so they are in strength. They have the new Move product, which is not entirely dissimilar to guys, so I'm going to discount that for now. I'm just talking about their larger cabinet weight device. They're not in uh, cardio. <sighs> Again, I don't hear a lot of people clamoring to get me a tempo. I've read some reviews, and they're, I would say they're mixed, but they skew toward favorable. Um, so I, I put them on the like the 45 of strength tonal as some of you may know i actually own a tonal device uh i own a peloton i also own a tonal device you can see here on the board today they are the highest subscription fee at 49 dollars a month they're exclusively strength they have the the wall unit which again all these typically have some type of monitor it's it's a big monitor that hangs on the wall and arms come down and you can do uh, strength over 100 different exercises uh, with a kind of a pulley magnetic resistance mechanism. Tremendous machine, in my opinion. They're doing well, but again, there's just one elephant in the room. It, it's Peloton. Do you hear a lot of people talking about Tonal? They provide live content as well as a full library of content. Um, I would say they are certainly ahead of Tempo. Uh, with the excellent machine um, and reviews are reviews of tonal are I would say spectacular. Uh, very few people dislike their tonal. It's a very expensive machine. It's a very expensive subscription. Do they have the cachet? Do they have the word of mouth? Do they have the popularity of someone like Peloton? Probably not. But I would say they are above tempo, I'll put them around the 35 going to the end zone. So they've got about 35 yards to go. Hydro has a rower. So we're classifying rower as strength today. That is all they have. They have two varieties of rowers. Uh, that and let's bring out 
Ergata. Uh, where do we have Ergata? We were supposed to, oh, there it is. Okay, we have Hydro and Ergata. Ergata is also a rowing machine. It's pretty much exclusively gaming or gamified device. So there's not really a lot of content there other than games. Think of it as kind of a Zwift, if you're familiar with Zwift. Uh, so you're not watching real people on the screen. You're watching a Mario Brothers type activity, or if you're familiar with Peloton, a lane break type activity. Um, Ergata is probably here. Hydro, which kind of like Tonal, has just exceptional reviews. People really love the Hydro of those who have Hydro. But in the connected space, if we view the field as a whole, where are they? And again, this is not necessarily a knock on the company. It may be a tremendous company, but we're looking at the playing field and the size of the bite they're taking out. If we converted this into a pie chart and we put members here, um, that will skew a little bit when we get to Beachbody. But I'm personally going to put Hydro, great machine. People really like it. But are they a contender in the fitness space? especially when we're talking about people like Echelon and, and Bowflex, we'll put them somewhere around the 18. They're certainly, I would say, above Regatta. Nordic Track, everyone knows Nordic Track, both strength and fitness, so they automatically get down into the green. I would say they're more of a historic brand. I, while I, I, I think I've heard or spoken to, I've been doing this for a while, a lot of these names come up to me, either proactively people contacting me about them or they I see them in the news or in my research. Nordic Trek is kind of one of these historical brands that came out, I don't know exactly when, but certainly in the 70s and beyond. You don't hear a lot about Nordic Trek. They have an app. Uh, let me check my other sheet here. I believe they do have live classes, $39 a month. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nordic track, where do you, I, I think they're respected. I would say they're respected more than Echelon. Do they have a broader market appeal than Bowflex? I'm going to say no. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm still going to put them on the poor side of the 50 yard line. I'm, I'm going to leave them where they're at there. Carol, this is not a name that most people would be familiar with. Carol Bike, it's the Carol Bike. It's a, it's marketed as a extremely, intelligent, metric-oriented workout machine with artificial intelligence and uh, things of that nature. Um, it's meant to kind of give you a full workout based, based upon the brains in the bike and the cloud and the app, you know, within five or 10 minutes a day. Um, it's kind of in the realm of Ergata, but cardio as most of you have probably never heard of this bike it's hard for me to put anywhere above the 10 yard line so I'll just slide so cycle up a little bit i don't think i i don't think we're going to get anything below so cycle today um but we'll put carol right there pretty much even with ergata frankly it probably should be a little bit shy of ergata we'll put it right there around the four or the five body beach body okay beach body is they've recently got the bike so we're going to limit the discussion to bike beach body as a company they do a lot of things but recently within the past year they've adopted a connected fitness piece of equipment a a bike they bought out mix fitness um which has a bike so they now sell this i remember looking at their one of their first uh ER reports because they recently went public and they kind of disclosed how many bikes they sold. And it was in the 10 to 20,000 range. I mean, it was not, it was not a lot. So as we, Beachbody as an entity is huge because they do a lot of things. I'm not going to go into Beachbody company today. It's not our focus. Uh, where are they as a player in cardio? Man, you know what? I, it's going to be a competitor to SoulCycle. I may, I may have lied to myself. I, I'm going to put them right 
right next to SoulCycle. Let's just, for organization purposes, we'll just kind of move things around. Um, I, I do not see them taking off. I don't see the receptivity. You know, they are welcome to contact me and tell me I'm crazy and they're five yards behind Peloton. But I, I, I can't live with myself if I put them even with SoulCycle. All right, a little bit above SoulCycle. All right, now we get to the rookies, the red shirts. Guys, fresh off the bench, fresh out of high school. Fairly recent, and this is my interpretation of recent versus veteran. So my apologies to anyone who, who takes offense to this, but I'm, this, is, this is my interpretation of how this goes. Arena and Vitruvian, we have these right next to each other. Arena right now has a $0 subscription fee. Vitruvian, these are very similar devices. If you remember the rumors about the true Peloton strength machine, it was rumored that it was a platform machine. These platform machines are basically boxes you stand on and on either side is a handle that are, is connected via pulleys and resistant mechanism. And you can pull up these handles, uh, do bicep exercises. I guess you could somehow do a leg exercise. Um, you do curls, uh, what have you. I guess you could lay down on it and do uh, pressing exercises, flies, anything of that nature. So these are two platform companies. They're almost indistinguishable if you look at the devices, pretty much indistinguishable. Uh, going back to the, the Peloton comment, the platform device, which is rumored, that's also the one that was rumored to, to have hit the trash can, and then they came out with Guide. And right now, we're not aware of Peloton having any true strength device on their books. So as again, most of you have never heard of these. They do fall into the strength category. They do have an app. They do have subscription fees. I'm going to consult my other sheet here. Vitruvian, neither of these have live classes. They, you just use the platform device, which has no monitor or display. You use it in conjunction with an iPad or an iPhone and monitor that iPhone or that iPad as you're doing the exercises and it counts your reps and, and provides feedback. I'm going to kind of lump them together. I honestly don't know enough about either company in terms of differentiation to separate them. Uh, Connect Fitness Market as a whole, I view this as a limited appeal device. There's these 40 or 50 or 60 pound platforms that you haul around and plug into the wall, but they are strength. So, uh, Ergata, I think that's a fair place. Keep them in strength, keep them around Ergata. Perhaps we'll actually, since they have We'll move them up slightly. Climber, climber is the ladder device, the stepping device. Uh, that is all they produce. It's kind of like hydro. Hydro produces a rower. Hydro is known for the rower. Climber, as their name implies, doesn't seem like they have a lot of aspirations to do anything beyond this ladder climbing device. So they are strength, very niche market. It's I've seen the machine. It's 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 pretty nice. I, they might even have a couple of variations of it now. Um, but it's in that niche area and we've got our niche platforms we've got our niche gaming rower we've got our niche ladder i think it's justifiably behind hydro i, I don't think a lot of people in fact I'll, I'll skip hydro up a couple a couple yards so they got a gain for me and where do we have lululemon so let's deal with for me and lululemon real quick lululemon has the mirror device um, it does not provide resistance. It does not provide weights. It does not provide cardio. It is simply a watch the class on the device and repeat what the instructor is doing. It's a lot like guide. So is it a connected fitness machine truly in our definition today? It's, it's not, it actually is not. So they hit the bench. Uh, so sorry, Lululemon, you're you're not even on the field today, and you won't be called up. For me, recently came up with they had the same device as Lulu, a, a mirror device, same fu essentially the same functionality. Uh, For me, actually has I have that they do not provide live classes, uh, whereas Lulu does. But they recently came out with a machine that is not entirely dissimilar to Tonal. But no one knows who Formy is. It may be the first time for 
90% of you watching this, if not 98% of you watching this, this is for, for me who I've never even heard of that. Justifiably, you have never heard of this. Uh, they just ran out of bounds, but they are over there. Lululemon sitting on the bench. Oxfit. What kind of have four main players? We're going to see them here on the field. About, let's bring up Jack's shocks too. And again, you can see the these subscription fees by their numbers. Arena there is double zero, though on their website FAQ, they actually say they are planning on changing that sometime in the future. We have Oxfit, which again is not entirely dissimilar to Tonal, though it's a more of a freestanding device. Tonal is connected against the wall. Tempo is a freestanding cabinet apart from the electrical cord, but it's essentially, it looks like an Ikea cabinet. Oxfit is something that you would like seeing in a gym. I, I kind of really, it, almost like a Smith machine, if you've ever seen a Smith machine. It is, it is huge. It is enormous. Whatever huge and enormous means to you in relation to, if you've seen Tempo, add like two or three more times to that. It is an enormous device that would take up the entirety of a small bedroom. But it is connected to fitness. They have an app. Uh, they do do live classes. They're $40 a month. I think it's a sexy device. It's very expensive. In relation to strength, the potential, where they actually are versus potential, I'm going to rate them a little bit higher. Um, I think they could compete with the likes of Tonal and Tempo, but they're a rookie. So, you know, they might march down the field here and join these folks. But right now, I'm going to plan them right there. Jack's Jacks, <laughs> Jack's Jacks is a funny machine to me. When I f first saw the Jack's Jacks machine, it was probably a year and a half, two years ago. I said, you got to be kidding me. No one's actually really making this. Can, can I pull it up? Pardon me, folks. Here it is. Look at this thing. That was a good one. Let me make sure I can, y'all can see this. Yeah, you can see that. That is a Terminator 9000 machine. I would fear this machine. If I walked into someone's house and I saw this in the foyer, I would say, I need to turn around and leave because whoever living here is your typical alpha male using this thing. Because this is, this is a device that has no equal. This is scary looking. Um, this borders on something a Bowflex would make, but I, I would argue it's like a little more elegant and well thought out. So it's a, it's interesting. Let's leave it there. It's interesting. It's expensive. Um, of the four horsemen we kind of have here, I think Jack's Jacks is probably going to have less appeal than Oxfit. I think they, they, they could march down the field a little bit. I don't think they could march down the field quite as bit as Oxfit. So, Jack Sox, God bless them. I, I appreciate them actually bringing that to market. I didn't think it would actually come to market when I kind of saw their uh, initial marketing materials pre-release. But God bless them. That is a thing of beauty. So, we have Lulu Lemson on the bench. That leaves us with boxing. Boxing, by all the definitions I see, is half cardio, half Fitness, they are connected fitness machines. Let me just double check to see if these folks have live classes. Neither one, have, or at least in my research, is, is listed as they do have live classes. They're boxing, so they, are, uh, so they get in the green area. Car mix of cardio and strength. I don't know enough about either one. I mean, I know what they are. I've done some research on them, but essentially Light Boxer and Fight Camp are both largely equal machines. I'm sure there are variances, but to round out kind of the the names you hear more often in this category, um, they would certainly be a more tar narrow targeted devices. So they would be, uh, I think together, they kind of fit in this behind the Ted and Yard line area. Um, I think within the boxing market, they're probably quite popular. 
and maybe they deserve uh, to be a little bit higher or at least further down the field than, than where I'm placing them. Um, but if you just take someone like Echelon who has both strength and cardio machines and if you if we had access to their membership roles, it would probably be light years beyond either Lightboxer or Fight Camp, and they're both thirty dollars a month. So just recapping kind of subscription fees, we see Tunnel at the highest at forty nine, Peloton down here at uh, forty four would be second, and then we just see a, a bucket full of people in the thirty high thirties, thirty range, and then really just just a couple handfuls, which Beachbody. You know, they just adopted the bike with that limited audience. It's largely an app type outfit, uh, but they did add bike. And Carol, which is a very focused machine doing very minimal things, but apparently doing it very well. So let's look where we are. Let's take it all in. We've got most of the named connected fitness companies way, way behind midline. We've got Tempo and Tonal and Strength, which Peloton's not even competing in currently. They're at least, they can see the end zone. It's there. They could pick and pass and get in the end zone. But who's the player here? Again, this is all my opinion, all my conjecture, all for just from my research and analysis, what I've been doing. Peloton is still the gorilla. in the current market and we're in a depressed market but if we were in the heyday of connected fitness uh, some of these players wouldn't even be here but it would probably look largely the same so peloton is the person to deal with they are the person to either continue moving the ball, the ball down the field in which case it means getting some strength or if they do some missteps, and Pelton has done a number of missteps, uh, if they continue to do missteps, perhaps it's not so much seeing tempo and tonal slide as seeing Pelton retreat. And the pie, as the pie grows larger, each of these gain a substantial more amount of people. So today we're not going to deal with, you know, how can they continue their march to the end zone or any of these other companies. We're just looking at the state of play. And right now the field is, we've got one team in the red zone, meaning within 20 yards of the end zone and pretty much everyone else not there. We've only got a couple players um, and they're in strength. Cardio, the nearest competitor I have is Bowflex is around the uh, 35 yard line. It's, it's, it's fascinating how in the cardio market, Peloton had just simply destroyed the competition. Um, we do have some, I'm gonna go into just a couple other things here. We have, do have some defenders. If we talk about what is stopping the march for all these players, I'm gonna cover these very briefly. Here are five that I've listed. Fatigue, I think it's self-explanatory. Everyone's a little bit fatigued with these connected fitness offerings. They seem a little bit, a lot of the same thing, but slight differences. Uh, the marketing is not fresh, or at least not fresh in the right way, in my opinion. Education, I think this is probably the defender that is most susceptible to falling off the field if people actually, if these companies actually put in effort Education is hard to speak to and market well. It is kind of a boring topic. Education here, we're talking about how these devices can help you. Not necessarily losing weight, because that a lot of charlatans, a lot of fads, a lot of bad information in weight loss, but all of these machines, I, I have respect for all of these folks. Um, they are making America fitter, or they want to make America fitter. I respect all of them. And if any of them have, can break the inf the hard work of educating the public and educating the pro product and providing the solution to their, the solution is their product, kudos to them. Take that education defender off the field and march down. I'm, I would be all for it. Love it. 
fantastic. Any one of these could do that. It's just education is, is hard because it's, it's numbing, it's boring, it's pedantic, it's, it's not exciting. Other things are exciting. So education is a defender that could come off the field. Price, subscription fees are expensive and pretty much with the exception of things like uh, Bowflex, Echelon, probably the, the boxing activities. Um, these are expensive machines with expensive uh, subscriptions. How do you deal with that? Uh, it, it's a barrier. It, that, that Defender likely never comes off the field. Peloton has, has lowered prices recently and it certainly helped. It certainly shrunk this Defender for Peloton, but it has not removed him from the field. These are still expensive devices. Economy, we all know we're in an economy right now that's that's not necessarily uh, fantastic. So that is a, a defender. And climate, just the, the, the climate right now in the pandemic, the climate was explosive. It was on fire, right? Now the climate toward workout at home is has an inverse relationship with work going back to work out at the gym right and going back to work out at the gym right now is as people have fallen into their old habits their old likes and dislikes um and they like the social aspects of gym so right now until the environment or the climate changes or these companies can market to a better place um that's the struggle so i mean the climate we're in right now is something like this. There are very few customers in the stands clamoring to get these devices. Every one of those companies on the board we just looked at want an environment like this, like it was in the pandemic. And that's not where we're at right now. We can be, I think, through education and uh, through savvy marketing and through releasing interesting devices and getting in the green zone the green zone is is should be money for most people there's only so much you can do staying in your own lane you can have exceptional devices and you're only going to advance the ball so far um and that's kind of where we're at right now so i'll leave it here i appreciate y'all watching and that's the uh the playing field as i see it of connected fitness have a good day y'all bye